I can't understand why we're not responding to this five alarm fire. But the polls are not uh, we're not great, and it tells us that you know voters are expressing uh, some apprehension here. It's it's pretty clear. That was James Carville, Pennsylvania Senator John Fetterman, fed up with the Democratic strategist, Mr. Carville, who has repeatedly expressed concern over Joe Biden's poll numbers. Fetterman telling Politico, quote, I'll use this as another opportunity to tell James Carville to shut the bleep up. All right, my friends, get ready to free your mind because it's showtime. I want to welcome back all my free minded friends. J.R. Dukes at your service. I am here to provide you with commentary for a better life because when you understand better you can live better got another great video for you folks the news keeps getting better for donald trump and his re-election chances no matter what you have been told on the news no matter what you have been hearing i'm telling you straight up it's looking great for donald trump the more they attack this man the more and more people support him and people see what's going on right in front of their eyes are you familiar with an individual by the name of james carville he was the number one man for President Bill Clinton. He is credited as the architect for his campaign that put Bill Clinton in the White House twice. He has come forward with a serious warning for the Democrats. Extremely interesting. Let's get into the video right now without further ado. I remain very pessimistic about our chances to, to really have a big election, to really galvanize key voters, young voters. I can't understand why we're not responding to this five alarm fire. But the polls are not, uh, we're not great. And it tells us that, you know, voters are expressing uh, some apprehension here. It's, it's pretty clear. That was James Carville, Pennsylvania Senator John Fetterman, fed up with the Democratic strategist, Mr. Carville, who has repeatedly expressed concern over Joe Biden's poll numbers. Fetterman telling Politico, quote, I'll use this as another opportunity to tell James Carville to shut the bleep up. Like I said, my man had. OK, make sure you understand this. You have the current setting senator from the great state of Pennsylvania. Remember this guy, John Fetterman, when he was debating, he could not even articulate a sentence. When he was debating, he was like, hello or good night. That was the first thing out of his mouth. Now, I got to give credit. The man was obviously suffering from the effects of a stroke. However, despite his incapacity and his inability to serve, at least at that time, he soundly defeated Dr. Oz, if you remember, from Pennsylvania. So at any rate, Today, we are seeing John Fetterman coming out and saying, hey, I like Joe Biden. James Carville, you need to shut the bleep up and I'll let you put your own word in there. Rather interesting. Hasn't been relevant since grunge was a thing. And I don't know why he believes it's helpful to say these kinds of things about an incredibly difficult circumstance with an incredibly strong and decent and excellent president. Talk radio host and America First Policy Institute ambassador Stacy Washington joins me now. Stacy, great to see you here. What does this dem on dem violence tell you about this split in the Democratic Party between the old guard and the new guard? Well, to kind of quote Fetterman there, there's an incredibly difficult circumstance going on with voters in Pennsylvania, which is a huge state that Democrats need to lock up in order to secure 2024 for Biden. And so what we're looking at with over 30,000 of those Democrats switching their registration to R, that means they have trouble there. So James Carville may have been around back when grunge was a thing, but he's still relevant now because he's sounding alarms for the Democrats on their policies that are failing Americans. So, I mean, we're talking about $11,000 worth of extra costs that Americans are bearing on a yearly basis to live the lifestyle they had during the Trump years. And that's that's something important. And Fetterman's, he's tone deaf here. Carville responded by saying, I've never met this man, to be honest with you, but I guess he's the proclaimer of relevance in modern American politics. But I'm really glad you brought up what's happening in Pennsylvania, because like you said, this is really bad news for President Biden in what really is his home state, Scranton Joe. You know, he moved to Delaware, but he considered himself Scranton Joe Scranton's in Pennsylvania more than 35,000 registered Democrats switched their party affiliation to Republican this year like you mentioned keep in mind Joe Biden only won Pennsylvania by 80,000 votes so you have 35 switching their, their their registration this year if this trend continues into 2024 is Joe Biden at real risk of losing the Keystone State 
So I would say yes. And this is also because President Biden doesn't have a propensity for changing his policy directions as Bill Clinton did. If you think back to the Bill Clinton years, after he was impeached, he really ran for the fences and tried to make changes on policy that would impact Americans and shore up his legacy as a great president. And he was able to usher in, with the help of Newt Gingrich, an amazing economic boom that really salvaged his presidency. Biden doesn't appear to have that ability to pivot and to make changes in order to benefit Americans. And that's why voters are looking more seriously at the front runner on the Republican side, which is President Trump. OK, so take both of these together. You have on the high level these politicos, a senator and a strategist attacking each other. But at the granular level, you have lifelong Democrats in a union state like Pennsylvania saying, I can't be part of this party anymore. So taking all of that again, I refer to it as dem on dem violence, but I think it goes deeper than that. There's a panic level inside the Democratic Party right now. Does that panic level just totally change the face of the 2024 election, regardless, excuse me, of who the Republican candidate is? So regardless of who the GOP actually nominates, who, who goes up against Biden in the fall, the issues facing the Democrats are systemic and the panic is not only are the issues systemic, they are profound and they are everywhere and people are sick of it. The Democrats simply will not stand up, except for James Carville. You have to give credit where credit is due. Now, James Carville, as you will remember back from President Bill Clinton's tenure, is rather conservative by today's standards. He would be what I would consider a blue dog Democrat. Uh, JFK type of Democrat, type of guy that I really could support on a lot of issues. However, he's trying to sound an alarm. When you call something a five alarm fire, you need to pay attention to it. And basically, the Democrats are attacking him for pointing out the obvious. It's like they want to sleepwalk through the next election. It's real because they know these are things they've advocated for and their base, the, the activist base, won't allow them to withdraw from. So I'm talking about their horrible energy policy, which refuses to allow us to drill on American lands, refusing to allow us to be net energy producers, refusing to look at the median household income for a family of four, which has dropped after rising consistently for four years in a row under President Trump. So if if you look at every single metric, whether it's the price of chicken thighs at the grocery store, the cost of your energy at home to heat your home, or the cost of energy at the pump, the numbers are trending in the wrong direction under Democrats, and they don't have the ability to shift policy-wise and make that change. So the panic is actually a sign of what is to come in 2024, and I believe we're going to see a change in the White House because of it. And let's also keep in mind. You can keep your party affiliation and vote for whoever you want. You can vote for a Republican. But the fact that they're switching to Democrat, uh, to Republican and disavowing the Democratic Party, that seems to be extremely telling as well. Final thoughts to you. Ten seconds, Stacey. Well, in Pennsylvania, in order to vote in the primary, you do have to actually be registered for that party. So they're they're switching their registrations because they want to vote for a particular candidate. We'll just have to see who that is. I, I think it's interesting because once you make that commitment, yeah, you could ostensibly go back. But it seems like you're all in for the Republicans now. You want to vote in the primary and you also want to vote in the general. We'll see what happens. Stacey, thank you. So he's exactly right. You have and they're specifically talking about the state of Pennsylvania. Joe Biden only won that state by roughly 85,000 votes. And you have over 35,000 people that went down to the county recorder's office or did it online. They simply took their registration as Democrats and placed it as Republicans. Now, that doesn't mean there's only 35,000 more people that have a tendency to, to support the Republican ticket. However, that is a very good indication that support is turning towards the Republican ticket, which is what I've been talking about all along. And you got to remember one other thing, too. Just because you are registered as a Republican or registered as a Democrat in this particular case does not mean that when you actually go down and vote for the actual president, you're not obliged to only vote for the Democrat nominee or the Republican nominee. When you choose a party in your state, it's only it only has to do with the initial picking in the primaries of who's going to represent the Republicans, who's going to represent the Democrats. That's the only thing that is basically a concern when you pick a particular party. Having said that, it's looking very good for Donald Trump's chances in Pennsylvania. It's obvious that his chances are looking good all over the United States. Remember, every time they keep attacking 
attacking President Trump. He just does better, better, and better. Great news for Donald Trump. Great news for you and me. Hopefully, this next year will be the beginning of the end of this woke nonsense, this anti-American nonsense, this anti-economy nonsense. We'll be able to drill for oil. We'll be able to take our kids and educate them the way we want to educate them. I'm not going to keep going over a laundry list, but I'm just telling you, I feel it. It feels great. Please make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Make sure you hit the thumbs up and please share this video with your family and friends or anyone that you might think might benefit from hearing this particular video because we have to reverse this indoctrination. My friends, as I always say, keep that free mind. Never give up. And until next time, I am J.R. Dukes.